Okay, so today we're going to talk about heterogeneities. So, so far, we've only dealt with reservoirs that had homogeneous properties. So remember, we solve, not only do we solve for the pressures in single phase, at the grid points within the center, but this is also the location of the data. The data in a problem is the, the permeability, the porosity, the viscosity of the fluid, right? So we'll start by considering the permeability in a scenario where you have different permeabilities indicated here by the colors. So K I minus 1 is not equal to K I is not equal to K I plus 1. And let's think of sort of an extreme example in which let's, let's use our room as a grid block again. So we're going to solve with the pressure in the center of this room, and this room is assigned Again, at the center, but it but it but it's assigned for the whole room a permeability. Let's say 10 millidarsi. Okay, and in the room next door, which is the next grid block, right? The permeability is zero. Okay, so if I'm going to compute the flux from this room going from this room into that one, if the permeability over there is zero, clearly what should the flux be? There should be no flow going from this room to that. One, right? But what if I, so let's say, the, again, the rooms are roughly the same size, so the wall here represents the sort of midway point between the middle of this room and the middle of that room. But it, what happens if I just take a geometric average of the permeabilities? It's 10 millidarsi in this room, and it's zero in that room. What should the permeability be, you know, at the wall or right near the wall? Uh, phi, right? Phi. And of course, on the other side of the wall, it should also be, according to that, phi, which would mean that there would be flow going into that room where we've assigned the permeability to zero. So clearly, our geometric average is sort of inadequate when we talk about permeability. So let's consider. Flow going from the grid block I to the grid block I plus 1. And we'll use this notation again where the, the wall in my example and the, the half wave point between the two grid blocks here is I plus a half. Okay. In that case, the, the flow going from I to I plus 1 will write like this. where Ki plus a half represents, at this point, some unknown average permeability. Okay? And, and the goal of what we're trying to do here is to figure out what that should be properly. So if we solve this equation for the pressure drop, Then what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to take that pressure drop. So that pressure drop, again, it, 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 in our example here, it represents the pressure in the center of this room to the pressure in the center of that room. We're going to split that up into the pressure between the center of this room and the wall, and the wall in the center of that room. Or using the notation here. do is we'll consider, I'll use some colors here to indicate, 
the pressure drop from the center of I to I plus a half, which I've indicated in green there, and the pressure drop from I plus a half to I plus one, which I indicate in yellow there. Okay. And remember, since this is a fixed delta x, this distance is delta x over 2, as is this one. So again, for the green, we then have the pressure in I plus a half minus PI is equal to Q mu dW delta x now over 2. Right? So I put a 2 in the denominator. So it's only half delta x over 2, ki, a. And it's only ki because we're, we're completely in the green now. Right? So we're completely in the block associated with i, which has been assigned to permeability ki. Right? And then for likewise for the yellow, we have that. Pi plus 1 minus Pi plus a half is equal to Q mu dW delta x equal to K. So that's essentially just the same equation. Delta x over 2 appears. And now, since we're in the yellow, we're completely in the I plus 1 grid block. So the permeability is Ki plus 1. So then we just add them together. So green plus yellow gives us the total pressure drop. Right? So that's P. Simplify that, we get the pressure drop Solve that back for the flux Q. So then if we compare, remember before we had that Ki plus a half A. And we can see that you know, this part of the equation and that part of the equation match. So therefore, we can infer that Ki plus a half must equal 
two. One over K I plus one over K I plus A. Inverse. Now, we can do some more algebra there. Um, anybody ever use Mathematica? I love Mathematica. So it should be on the Cockrell School, like, virtual desktop thing. Um, but I, I use it for all kind of algebra because I stink at algebra. I make a mistake. So one over ki plus one over ki plus one inverse. Simplify that thing. So that's equal to KI, KI plus one over KI plus. Okay, so now using our example from before, if the permeability in this room is 10 millidarcy, and the permeability in that room is zero. What is Ki plus a half, which would be the permeability at the wall right here, according to this averaging scheme? Which is what we want. That would give us no flow into that room. So this is called a harmonic average. the harmonic mean. So the harmonic mean would always give you something less than the geometric mean. And in the case of zero, it's going to give you the, the right answer. So now hopefully this will add some clarity or some meaning to what we did last time where we used this control volume approach to derive the same equations, but we had all these, we used this notation ti plus a half that showed up in the equations, right? So now, this should make a little more sense because we have that ti plus a half, which is the transmissibility associated with going from one grid box to, to the next, is equal to k i plus a half a So that's how we handle heterogeneities and the permeability. So the next thing we'll talk about is heterogeneities in the grid block size or varying grid 